numbers too big to ignore. Has feminism failed? This morning we talked with a longtime opponent of the feminist movement about the failings of feminism and how it's affecting our country. Author Phyllis Schlafly joining us to talk about that in her controversial new book. Ms. Schlafly, the subtitle of that book is What Conservative Women Know and Men Can't Say. So what does that mean? That feminism has really taken over. They don't like to call it that, but the feminists are very prominent in the government, in the judiciary, especially in academia and in the media, and they have intimidated the men from ever saying anything that would expect women to do the things that women ought to be doing, like taking care of their babies. Well, Phyllis, you're a Phi Beta Kappa grad from Washington University, a lawyer. You got a master's degree from Harvard, an honorary doctorate in humane letters. Gee, I I guess uh, it's hard to imagine that you're against feminism. You have the mistaken idea, you've been taught by the feminists, that the feminists are interested in successful women. That's not true. If they were, you'd hear them bragging about successful women like Margaret Thatcher or Condoleezza Rice or Sarah Palin. Obviously, she's successful in politics. That's why they can't resist attacking her. They don't believe women can succeed because we live in this oppressive patriarchy. Do you abide by the theory that as a woman gains more freedom and more education, more power, that they become less happy, that it's only a man that's going to make a woman happy? Well, I do think most women want to be married, and I think most of the feminists are unhappy. They wake up in the morning, believing they have problems and that they want to make it a societal problem instead of their own personal problem. It's not education that makes you unhappy. It's the attitude that you are a victim. And, of course, they claim that they've opened up these opportunities for women. Ridiculous. I worked my way through college as a gunner on the night shift in an ammunition plant firing 30 and 50 caliber ammunition. I have known women doctors. They all tell me that they thought that the standard was higher for them in medical and dental school or in law school. Don't you think in days past that there were higher standards for women to get into things that uh, men didn't have to meet? Well, in our lifetime, the standard is lower. Every day I hear about men who are applying for a job and they say, no, you're the wrong sex or the wrong color. The standard is lower. That, that is the problem. And, of course, they showed that in some of the military tests. They tell you that women are doing the same as men. They're not. They've changed all the exercise rules, so women only have to meet a lower standard. You mentioned that m- most women would, would like to be married and married happily. What if a marriage is terrible? What if it's truly unsurvivable? What's a woman to do? She can uh, check a box on a paper and get out of it. That's their idea of uh, the easy way to do it. What's your option? A lot of it depends on whether they're children. The feminist movement teaches women to put their own self-good above every other value. And I think when you have children, you've got to do a lot of self-sacrificing to be a good mother or a good father. Feminists don't believe in that. They think it's oppression to expect women to look after their own babies and the taxpayers should pay for it in daycare centers. Thank you, Phyllis. Author and longtime opponent of the American feminist movement, Phyllis Schlafly. The name of her new book, The Flip Side of Feminism, What Conservative Women Know and men can't say.